Hi, and welcome back to another episode of the Ultimate Relationship Show. I'm your host, Midori Verity, and today we are talking all about infidelity. We're going to learn if you can have a relationship after infidelity, how to overcome it if you can, and we're going to find all the ins and outs because we have a very special guest with us. I just from talking with her for a few minutes, I can tell that she's very heart-centered and very dynamic as well. Her name is Alicia Taverna, and she is a licensed marriage and family therapist. And what I loved about her is that she spent four years working for a homeless shelter. And what she did there was she helped women find themselves gain confidence, and then start their lives over again. And working with these women, it inspired her to start her practice. So that was her inspiration. That's why she got into becoming a marriage and family therapist. And so she's going to be talking to us all about infidelity. So welcome to our show. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here and talk to you about this topic that I talk about all day, every day. <laughs> <laughs> then you know a lot about it, which is perfect because this comes, I mean, all of us know someone who's experienced infidelity. Mm -hmm. So it's a hot, hot button because it causes a lot of problems. It does. Yeah. It, so tell us. Know somebody who's experienced it, it's just because they haven't told you. So I think that's really important. And a lot of people, um, you know, couples come to my practice and they're like, I can't believe this has happened. Um, you know, I can't believe you actually have a practice where you focus on this, but it's true. Um, you know, I forget the exact statistics, so don't quote me on this, but I think about 40% of people who experience infidelity actually stay together. They're just not talking about it. Oh, and that's probably a good thing. I think mm -hmm. keeping it private, with, you know, other than with your closest, closest friend, um, from what I've read is that that's actually probably a good idea, not it is, blasting it, it out there. Yeah, because what happens is you, you know, you tell maybe your mom, and so they start to hate your husband, mm -hmm. and then you guys make up, and you moved on, but she hasn't moved on. She hasn't had the time to process or the therapy or whatever steps you've taken in order to, you know, create a better relationship. So that lingers on for a long time. Good point. Very good point. We all, you know, when it comes to loved ones, we all want to protect them, right? But we don't always know all the details. So, okay. So tell us some of the reasons why people cheat. Why does infidelity happen? Well, okay. I'll start with the caveat that I'm not a researcher. So, you know, I don't sit in a lab and test people. Um, but I do have the observations that I make in my practice with the couples and the individuals that I see. Um, and of course I read the research, but I, I, if I have to break it down to kind of the lowest common denominator, I would say that people cheat because it's exciting. It makes them feel alive in some way. And so, we can take, for example, you know, a man who's cheating on his wife with a younger woman. That's all that you see on the outside, but what you don't see on the inside and kind of what I get to see, in, on, you know, on my couch and in my practice is, you know, maybe this man is, has been with his wife for a really long time. They've been married, um, but there's certain parts of him that have become inauthentic. He might see her as like a nag. Um, and so he's doing things to appease her. And so that inauthenticity creates kind of like this slow, um, I don't want to say death. I think that's a little bit too extreme, but there's these parts of himself that have died. And so, you know, this other woman brings those parts of him and makes them come alive. And so you know, that's the exciting part. And that's what keeps people, you know, in these tangled webs of these, you know, extramarital relationships. Um, but also, you know, I see women too, and it's not, and, and so I'm not, I don't want to generalize just men and women. It happens across, you know, all demographics, all ages. Um, but for example, sometimes I see women who they cheat because there's been a death or they, they've lost something in their life. So they might have lost a parent or they've lost their freedom as they've become a parent themselves. And so again, there's these parts of themselves that kind of um, are no longer present. They're, they're a little bit dead inside. And so again, this other person comes along and kind of awakens those feelings within them, th those parts of themselves that make them feel alive. Wow, that is interesting. Yeah. Okay. so. 
is there, are there things that we can do? I know that obviously the, what you're talking about develops over a period of time where they're starting to feel like their emotions and their authenticity is being pushed down or hidden. Are there things that we can do as a couple or as a person to help avoid some of that? Yes. Yeah, so, well, you can't cheat proof your marriage. Um, you know, there, there's no cheat proofing. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> Mental note. There's no 100% guarantee with anything in life, you know, things happen, but you can, you know, it's really important to keep that love alive. It's really important to show up and um, be very authentic and transparent with who you are inside with your partner, because that's what creates intimacy. And those intimate moments are what create the great connections that we have with one another that, that keep us together. And, um, you know, if you're really involved in your relationship and not overly involved, but really feeling an intimate, close connection with your partner, you're much less likely to stray. Right. Okay. That's a good point. Um, so I know that you work with a lot of couples who've been through infidelity. What are some of the things that you do with them to overcome, you know, to help them deal with the situation? And then also to decide, is this worth saving? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I work with, okay, so there's kind of like three camps of people that I, I work with. So, you know, one is the couple where they come to me and they say, you know, one, one partner has been unfaithful, but they've decided that they want to stay together. And so in that case, what I work towards is helping them find uh, their contribution to what led up to the affair. And so a lot of people will say, well, you know, she's the one who cheated. So it's all her fault, but that's not true. You know, the other partner has played a huge role in what's happened leading up to that. And so my work with the couples is to really help them uncover what it is that caused that to happen, um, help them to take responsibility for their actions that kind of, that led to the infidelity. And then, um, uncover things that might be hidden that they might not have thought about um, that have caused them to engage in kind of those behaviors, but then uh, change that behavior, change that pattern. Um, and so a lot of it is developing more intimacy through better communication, um, more intimacy through play. Um, but so the initial phase is really, you know, going through a lot of the anger and allowing each partner to kind of discuss what it is that they're unsatisfied with in the relationship. Okay, great. Those were good tips. So, you know, obviously when someone cheats, the trust level is nil. How do you help people rebuild that? How, you know, other than just kind of putting blind faith in into it, how long does it take? Does it happen overnight? What, what, are, what can people do to build that part back up? So these are the questions that I do get all of the time from couples. How long is this going to take? You <laughs> don't have a magic number. Um, but it, it's just about really coming to understanding and, like I said, being authentic in the room. So once people are able to kind of put it all on the table, especially in counseling. Counseling is just so helpful, especially in terms of this, because you can have the same argument over and over, and then it just kind of goes in circles. But when you have a therapist it's a third party a neutral party who's there to um so i like to look at it as like okay we're sitting in your living room and i can see everything but i'm gonna kind of maybe pick up this rug over here and say hmm what's what do you think's hiding over here or maybe you know around the corner under this pillow we might see something that we haven't thought about and so that's kind of what therapy is like um, in terms of couples therapy so i help them um, reconnect with some of those things and then um there just has to be new boundaries so it's kind of like starting over over. Like the relationship that the couple had before, the marriage that they had before is over. And I let them know it's, it's ended. And so do you want to start another relationship with the same person and move on in a different way? And so once they can kind of get to that point, um, you know, there's a lot of questions that are asked to understand, you know, what, you know, people want to ask a little bit too many questions sometimes about the infidelity, about, you know, the details, which isn't healthy, but I help them ask the right questions so that they can come to an agreement about how they want to move forward. And so that looks like making new boundaries. So it might start small, like maybe they're not in the same house, maybe, um, they're going to agree to uh, see each other three times a week and move towards moving back in or whatever the case may be. So it's really, it's baby steps and rebuilding that trust and rebuilding that relationship kind of all over again. Right. I call it pressing the reset button. Yes. Yes. Sometimes we just have to press the reset button and start with a clear slate. 
Um, easier said than done. I know you've seen that. It's so much easier said than done. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's say you have a couple and it just doesn't work out. For whatever reason, people aren't accepting responsibility or whatever may be the issue, it doesn't work out. Mm -hmm. For what, I've seen this, and this again is just an observation, this is a personal observation, but I have seen it with women where they're kind of devastated, especially if they have been in charge of raising the kids and they haven't been working, they haven't been in the workforce or they don't have a, a, a solid career to carry mm -hmm. them. How do you help them rebuild? Yeah. So I do see couples where, you know, they, they kind of decide to divorce on my couch. And um, so they go their separate ways. And a lot of times one of them stays, you know, because uh, like, you know, and so maybe they're not the person who strayed, maybe they're the injured partner, but, what I always like to tell people is like, you can start a new relationship, but you have to take yourself with you. So it's still about thinking about what were the underlying causes? What, what did I contribute in my marriage to my partner's infidelity? You know, what were the things that I didn't show up and do? Uh, where was I lacking? So taking responsibility, but then the majority of my work is helping them reconnect with their strengths. Um, a lot of times I see so many women who, they get into this relationship and, you know, we know those girls in college, you know, they get a boyfriend and poof, they're gone. Um, all of a sudden they have no interests of their own. So I really help them to reconnect with their strengths and find out, you know, where are those parts of yourself that have kind of been overshadowed or neglected by this relationship? What is, you know, do you have a creative side? Maybe you are an artist, but that's, you know, just not been the case because you're focused on family and kids and, you know, all the stuff that we get involved in the day to day, but those things are so important and those things make us who we are. It made you who you were before you started this relationship and probably what attracted your husband to you. So I help them reconnect with those strengths and build on those strengths so that they can move forward and make the best decisions for themselves and their families. You know, it's difficult to make good decisions when you're so, you know, just caught up in all of the negative emotions and emotional turmoil. But if you can reconnect with some of your strengths, you start to build confidence and, um, you know, start to put one foot in front of the other and move forward in a more positive way. Right. Yeah. It's, um, we forget, we lose ourselves sometimes yeah. over the years, don't we? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what about fear? because that is just such a huge, huge mountain for so many of us. If we've been doing the same thing for so many years, we're set in our ways, you know, we, we are used to getting up at a certain time and doing this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. What about the fear? You know, we're, you were talking about rediscovering your passions that you love. So maybe it's going back into a different career, but you haven't done it in 20 years. Mm -hmm. How do you help your clients get over that? So I, you know, if I had a woman sitting here and she's just afraid, you know, afraid to move forward, I would try to understand, like, where does that fear come from? Is it her negative self-talk? Is it something that somebody, you know, a parent or somebody told them in the past that's creating this, this fear? Um, and most likely it's, you know, it's all self, um, self-made, you know, we yeah. tell it's, it's about the things that we tell ourselves. And so that's really important. So, um, I work with them on their self-talk and, um, you know, what is it that you're saying to yourself when you step outside your door? Are you saying that I can't do this? Or are you telling yourself, you know, you're so stupid. Are you telling yourself that you'll never make it alone? Um, what are those things that you tell yourself? Um, and so we kind of have this tape that plays in our head and it's, it's a lot of times it's, you know, unconscious. We don't even realize that we're doing it, but it's so powerful. It has this hold over us. And so I work with women to kind of discover what it is that they're telling themselves and then create new patterns. So, um, you know, we make thought records and um, journaling, like I'm a huge proponent of journaling um, to help them understand uh, where their thoughts are coming from, where some of the negative things that they've um, come to think about themselves, where did that come from? Um, but really to just reflect and, you know, be introspective about themselves. Yeah, and I want to visit this for a second because I know that the fear is what stops so many of us from really pursuing our dreams. And I just want to say that for anyone who's listening, and I have a feeling we're going to have lots of people watching this, is that there are so many tools out there to help you overcome fear. And it's something that I really, really strongly suggest you put a ton of energy into because it's not that hard to do these mental, to change that mental recording. That's what it is. It's a mental recording. Exactly. 
yeah, there's exercises you can do that can help you just break through and change your entire life and, and accomplish things that you never thought possible for yourself. So mm -hmm. make sure that you look into that or find a coach or a counselor to help you with that because that is, it's amazing once you can kind of unlock that and, and explore who you can be and what you can do and not have that fear holding you back anymore. But I do want to move into the next section because you have a new program coming out regarding this for those people who it just doesn't quite work out. Um, the starting over series. So tell us, tell us about this. I want to know more. So I'm just, you know, kind of in the planning phase, but if I'm going to be doing a starting over a video series for people who are starting over after heartbreak. So helping women, um, like we just talked about, uncover some of their negative thought processes, um, really dig in and focus on themselves. Because like I said, a lot of times we, you know, put all of everything that we have into our relationships and we're not focused on them on ourselves. And so, you know, after you end a relationship it's a really good time to reflect and be introspective and so it'll be a lot of um, video exercises um, things for them to do on their own journaling prompts um, things like that but it's going to be um, just a short series um, that they can go on and download and you know get started with that do something at home on their own if they're afraid to come to therapy or they don't have time, you know, whatever the case may be, you know, I really just, my passion is helping women to start over and do it effectively and bring them up and lift them up. So hopefully, you know, they'll be able to go on and download this um, and start over. And, but as the best, uh, the best form of themselves, the best version of themselves once they've left this relationship. So that's what it's all about. Ooh, that's empowering. That's empowering. I can't wait for it to come out so I can share it with, with those people. I, I have a ton of clients who are in their second marriages and they're scared mm -hmm. that the same problems will happen again. And I think, um, you know, I know that you have a certain audience that you're making that for, but I think it will also apply to them. So I'm excited for you to, to put that out. Yeah. Me too. And then also I know Alicia has a special gift for everyone who is listening or watching. So can you tell us about that? Sure, yeah. So the free gift is um, you'll be able to go on and download it. It's just a list of my journal prompts. Um, so there's about 20 journal prompts. So if you're struggling after heartbreak to kind of put the pieces together, these are reflective questions for you to go through and just journal about. Um, like I said, journaling is just so powerful, um, not just in the moment, but then even after the fact. So maybe you might go back even like a month or two later and look at the past, you know, ask, answer these questions, um, and then return a couple months later and look at your answers and see how, see the growth, see, you know, what you've accomplished in that amount of time and how your answers change. But I think they're just some really helpful questions to ask yourself as far as how to move on after this relationship. That's awesome. That's awesome. Cause just having those prompts can just trigger certain thoughts, certain ideas that were buried or you didn't quite think about them the way that will be beneficial for you. So I think that's an incredible gift. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, of course. So anyway, thank you so much for being here and talking to this, to us about this, this delicate we talk for days. We can talk for days, right? <laughs> there's so, there's so, so much um, because yeah, it's, it's an issue that so many of us have gone through and I'll, I'll be honest. I'll be totally clear that when my, I've been with my, my husband now for 29 years. Mm -hmm. And in the very beginning, when we were dating, we went through, he, he cheated and, um, and it was devastating. It was before we got married, but it was devastating yeah. and it took a long, long, long time to repair it and then to build up that trust. So mm -hmm. having someone that can help and help guide you and help you make everything just kind of clear and being able to see under the rug, like you said earlier, to to see what's hidden under there to help you uncover those issues and see that probably both of you have some responsibility for it and just taking ownership of that um that makes a ginormous difference in helping you progress to healing and developing a much much stronger amazing relationship so with that said i'm very very happy to say that we did overcome it we have the only reason why i went into this business is because 
it can happen and it can be amazing and your relationship can be your back and not just your backbone, but it can just be such a beautiful, magical thing in your life, mm -hmm. but it just takes working through all those things, whether it's infidelity, whether it's finances, whether it's any kind of arguments, finding the way it's really finding the way and understanding it and being, um, being clear on it. So again, thank you so much. So how can we find out more information about you? Sure. So um, you can go onto my website. It's ranchocounseling.com. Um, there's some videos there about talking to your partner about cheating. Um, you can sign up to get my blog, which every week I have a different topic, um, all geared towards women who are going through some sort of relationship struggle. So I give free advice. Um, yeah. And so there's a lot of, lot of great stuff on the website, ranchocounseling.com or on Facebook um, at, you know, facebook.com forward slash rancho counseling. Okay, perfect. And then if you didn't have a chance to write that down, if you were driving, I hope you were not writing, but you can find all of her information on our website at midoriverity.com where we have her podcast, we have her video, we have all these notes and how to get a hold of her. So I encourage you to go check it out there. And once again, thank you for being here with us. Thank you for having me.